ride cycle in Blender. All right, so first of all, we are going to start off by going into preferences and looking up the sun position add-on. Let's make sure we have that enabled. Hop on over to the render properties and change your render engine to cycles. Go into rendered view and we will now have the completely default scene. Go over to the world properties and change it from a color to the sky texture. This will add in the Nishita sky texture. We now have this sun position add-on over here, but before we go ahead and change some values in there, let's select our light here and change it to a sun lamp. Now let's change the strength down to zero because we will not actually use this light. I'm just gonna rename it to sun. Now hop on over back to the world properties and open up the sun position add-on. In here, we will select a sun object, which will be our sun, and we will select a sky texture, which will just be the sky texture that we just added. Now for a coordinate location, I will use the location of Amsterdam, which is close to my home. Just type in enter, and it will change the sun position. If you don't do this and take the default value, it will just put your sun right on top of your scenes. I like to use values which represent uh, the sky as I see it during the day, which makes it looks more realistic at least to me so just choose a place where you want your sky to represent next up we have this time menu and i think this is the very important part of this add-on we have this time slider which will allow us to just tweak the day now i do think the <laughs> amount of light we get during these times of the year is pretty short so i'm just going to change the uh, month here to be close to the longest day of the year so now we get a lot more daylight you could also use this value just to get a uh, regular number so it will just convert it to a number uh, i just like to use this regular calendar notation the utc zone however can also change the actual time zone you're in and i believe i'm in a plus one so let's just leave it at that and we're good to go all right so this is the time value and we can actually animate it to get a cycle so if we go to frame one we can set this to zero and it will be completely black now hover over the time value and hit i this will create a keyframe and now let's go over to the last frame of our animation and i'm going to go all the way to the right and we have now one full cycle so 23.999 basically meaning pretty much 12 o'clock at night. This is just one day. And in my animations, I showed you several days of time passage. So how can we achieve this? It's actually very easy. You drag this value all the way to the right, then click it and add in a multiplication for the amount of days that you want. So I'm gonna go for two days in this animation. So I'm gonna times two this value. I will change the value and just hit I again. And if we now play this back before we do that, however, time is a linear thing. So it moves at a constant rate. So hit T in here and choose linear interpolation to actually get the proper interpolation for time. Now you will see this is one day uh, moving across and next we will get the second day. If you want more days, you can just change the value, multiply it times 10 or 20 if you want 20 days. Doesn't really matter whatever fits your project, just choose that. Enlarge this window and actually gonna open up a new one as well. There it is. And I'm gonna set this one to the shader editor and change this to the world shading. And you will see we now have a complete black guy. And that's because we are still currently at, uh, you know, midnight. Change the name for this guy texture so we actually know which one is which. So I'm just gonna relabel this one today. Take these two nodes, duplicate them, and take this guy texture over here. I'm just gonna call this one night. Let's add in a mix shader and plug these in together. I'm going to change the day shader first. So let's hop on over to the day point somewhere. And uh, I think the default values are a bit strong. So I'm going to change the strength to 0.7 and the intensity to 0.7 as well. So sun intensity 0.7 and the background strength to 0.7. And in this case, for the night, I'm going to change this to 0.5 and change the sun intensity to 0.01. So a very, very low value. All right, so for our night here, first of all, let's just reset our sun elevation and our sun rotation. So right click it and reset to default value. So now we have just a regular day looking kind of sky texture. If we change this altitude value and set it to a very high number, which will basically mean we're somewhere close to space, this will look like a night sky. And we're just gonna leave everything default and one thing you'll notice, however, is that during the passage of time, um, our night sky is actually not changing. And if we go over here, you will see our sun obviously is moving because that's what the add-on does. However, in this case, it's not doing anything. And there's actually a very simple fix for this. We can just select our sun elevation for the day sky texture, right click it and hit copy as new driver. Let's hop on over to the sun elevation on the night sky texture and hit right click paste driver. Okay, so now we have the exact same value. And if we 
check this out, they are changing both with the same amount. Now let's do the same with Sun Rotation. So right click it, copy as new driver and go over to night, right click, paste driver. Okay, so this is now working fine and we actually get a rotation of our light. So that's something that we want for sure. Now I am going to change the sun size to 0.01 as well because I want it to be, I don't know, even smaller, maybe 0.01. I want it just to be very, very small, more like a star because it doesn't really resemble a, uh, a moon at all. Okay, so this is our night sky and it is actually moving, but it's in the exact same position. So when it's night, it's night in this one as well so black and that's not something that we want so what we want to do is we want to right click the drivers here and open up the drivers editor now let's select our sky texture node and open up this menu over here so these are our two drivers and i'm going to select the sun elevation first and change the type from averaged value to scripted expression now let's just put a negative so a minus in front of our expression here and you should be good to go now let's do the same to the sun rotation so scripted expression and just adding in a minus in front of it and voila. So what we have now is actually at the time of night, it is showing and it is moving and later on comes black. At this point, however, it's day and we are switching to the other shader. So let's start working on switching the two. I am going to start off by switching back to the regular daytime sky texture. And I'm gonna to go to the point in time where the sun starts coming up. So that should be somewhere around four and you will see the value over here should come close to this value over there. So I think, yeah, okay, 22 might be a bit late already. So 20, yeah, 20 looks fine to me. So I'm gonna take the mix shader here and set it to one because it should be night at this point. And I'm gonna go hit I while hovering over the factor there. Now I'm gonna go five frames later and set this all the way down to zero and hit I again. Now I'm going to select these two keyframes, hit T and choose linear. And now if we play this back, you will see we get a nice switch over here between the two shaders, creating our transition between a night sky and a daytime sky. Move across time again and go to the point where the sun sets. So it should be 115 or so. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. So let me just copy this value over here. Just select the keyframe, hit Control C, Control V. It will paste it at the playhead. Move across five frames, select the other keyframe, control C, control V, and we're good to go. We're switching back to our night sky. Now let's do that again. And in this case, it might be a bit harder actually, because we need to get the point where the sun is actually reopening. So <laughs> this might be a bit more difficult. Instead, I'm just going to take this keyframe for now and just you know, paste it back in here, remove it later, and let's see where our time is actually coming back. Okay, so at this point, I think 145 should be good. Let's just remove this keyframe over here and instead take this one, copy and paste it, copy this other one and move over five frames and paste it over here. So now we have it and switching again at the correct time. And again, let's move on over until the point where it sets. 239 ish or so will do. And again, let's copy over this most right keyframe here. So control C, control V, and moving over five frames to 244 and just copy this one. Et voila. And we should now have a nice complete cycle. Okay, so it's switching between the two. Everything is looking fine and everything is working fine. Final step, however, is our night sky is a bit bland and it needs a couple of stars. And we are going to do this by actually adding in another mix shader and plugging it in before our actual night sky here. Now I'm going to take a emission shader and plug this in on the bottom value there. For our emission value, we'll use a noise texture and a color ramp. Plug the noise texture inside of the color ramp and plug the color ramp inside of our emission shader. Now let's just drag this all the way to the right and this one all the way to the left. Bring them in pretty, pretty close. And we're going to set this thing to like, I don't know, 500 for starters. Set the detail down to zero, roughness down to zero as well. And we now have way too many stars. So I'm just going to take this white value back here a little bit and take this black value in as well. And there you go. So these are our stars. I'm just going to increase the strength a little bit to something like 
five or so and we have a nice starry sky very important now is to actually hit ctrl t with the noise texture selected to add in our mapping and texture coordinate nodes which again as always that's a node wrangler feature so make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled all right so we have the generated texture coordinate which is fine for creating a, a custom night sky and i want to change the rotation of our stars to actually sort of resemble the uh, universe or basically our earth spinning within the universe so uh, i'm gonna take a hashtag frame here and i'm gonna set it to divide by 150 or so make it nice and slow and we are going to do the same on the z rotation so hashtag frame divided by 150 and we should now get a rotation in sort of a circular fashion so we now get a nice circular rotation and if you see this in your time lapse it will look realistic like these stars are actually rotating in our sky all right so this is actually uh, everything that you want i like to add in motion blur um, for the stars which will give it some slight motion blur when it's moving around and i think that looks uh, a bit more realistic for the type of uh, exposure that a camera has and obviously you can also change the color management set it to high or something to get a bit more contrast especially during the nights but this is basically it so for the final result of the actual night settings i used a background strength of 1.5 which is a tad stronger giving a uh, more intense moonlight result but i decreased the sun intensity so the overall intensity of shadows and etc is a bit less strong so this is the entire setup. I think it's a very, very easy and also a very good looking result. And it really adds to a scene if you have this passage of time. So that wraps up the entire video. If you enjoyed it and appreciate what I'm doing here, then please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. It will give you access to all the project files and it really helps me maintain the channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel.